20 years. And uh, when I started, uh, when I was hired by the synagogue, uh, I asked Daddy how long, and he said, as long as you can. And that was 10 years, and my, and my Lyme's disease was crippling me so much, I had to resign. Now, when I resigned, the congregation revolted. Men got up crying. Rabbi, we don't care if you never visit another person. Just keep, stay here and keep teaching. And that was a, that was a theme over and over and over again. You know, just stay and teach, stay and teach. And finally, I, I, I got them, I heard them all and got them sat down. I said, listen. If I can't pastor, I don't have a right to teach. That week, a member of the community had a planned procedure. We knew it three months in advance. Planned procedure to go in, have the procedure, spend the night, go home the next day. Well, they did all of that and never once saw their rabbi. That's unacceptable. That's un- I, I, I resigned immediately. That, that's completely unacceptable. And if I can't do the job, I don't deserve to teach. And I had to teach them that, that I, that I don't deserve to teach, no matter how good I am. I don't deserve to teach if I can't pastor. You got to hear me on this and let me do it. Well, I'm going to do it, but you got to be with me. Don't hold this against me. You're wrong. So this is the right thing. And within two months, I was housebound. In another three months, I was bedbound. And I stayed bedbound for 12 years. And then on December 12th of 18, uh, my my caregivers couldn't wake me. I was in a coma. Uh, ambulance called the ride to the. I don't have no memory of any of this. I just what they told me after the fact. Uh, but uh, 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 the ambulance ride to the to, to the emergency room all day in the emergency room, and at the end of the day they moved me to ICU, and finally. Finally, somebody stopped to talk to my people and didn't give them any hope. He said, Mr. Malone has three major issues all fighting him right now, any one of which may kill him tonight. But you got him where he belongs, and we're going to do the best we can. That was what they were told. Three days later, I, four days later, total. I was three days in ICU. Uh, I woke up in ICU, didn't know where I was or how long I'd been there, knew it wasn't home, and nurse came by and, excuse me ma'am, can you tell me where I'm at and how long I've been here? Oh, Mr. Malone, you sound like you're with us today. I said, yes, but who is us, and how long have I been here? And she said, you're in St. Francis, and you've been here for four days. One day in the emergency room, and three days here with us. And uh, I'm going to go get a doctor right now, because you're sounding great. I said, okay, you go get the doctor. And I'm looking around, I see, I see uh, a man that... that that uh, lived at my house. I saw him on the other side of the of, of the window, looking in, and I found out he sat with me every night. Every night he sat with me. He'd go home and sleep during the day, but back at night. That's wild. The only time I've 
the only time I've had a problem, you, you know, the scripture says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, that's never been true for me. It's never been a light to my feet. It's always been a light to my path, and I could see where I was going. That's where it's always been. I'm back into life now, and that's gone. Now it is a lamp unto my feet, and I'm having to relearn. I don't know how y'all do this. It was so much easier when it was the whole path. This right at your feet, man, I, I ain't liking it. <laughs> now, if you never knew nothing but that, that would be different, but I ain't liking it. I ain't liking it at all. But if that's where God wants me, that's where I want to be. You know, I learned that in this journey. I got mad at God after he healed me. I got mad at him and, and was arguing with him, look, you were in me taking out Lyme disease, taking out narcotic addiction. You, you, you was working multiple miracles. You, you took Lazarus from three days dead and brought him back. What's a little pancreas? <laughs> Come on, man. You could have done a little pancreas. Come on. What's wrong with you? You were there. What would it have cost you? And, and, and finally, one day, my heart just changed. Just absolutely changed. And I wept before the Lord for a while. Embarrassed, ashamed. But I got to the point where I could pray honestly. If this is the way you want me, type one diabetic with an insulin pump. If this is, if this is the center of your will, because I am eating, I'm being blessed every day. But if this is the way you want me, then this is the way I want to be. Forget about the pancreas. I'm okay. If this is the way you want me. Because I want what you want for me. I don't want my will. If I had my will, I'd be dead tonight. Thank God for Jim. Yeah. I don't want my way. I want God's way. You know, there they, they used to be a, 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 a fad uh, where people would have a bumper sticker saying, God is my co-pilot. Right, I remember that. Well, he's not my co uh, I'm not his co-pilot. I gave him the keys a long time ago. I ain't driving. I'm just glad I'm along for the ride. But I'm not driving, he is. And if he tells me tomorrow to, to pack up and head to Argentina, be a missionary, I'm packing up. Now, I don't know how a 70-year-old man's going to accomplish that, but it, I know my daddy's voice. I, know, I don't have to question, was that you? I know his voice. We've talked plenty. So, so, if this is the way he wants me. And he let me come to that. He just sat back and said, let William grow a little bit. He let me come to that on my own. In my own time and in my own way to realize, duh. Yes, he was right there. Yes, he could have done it. Do you think he's equal to you? Do you think he meant, meant to hurt you? Or is that his will for you? That's why I had to cry a while. I was so ashamed. So ashamed. 